Stay away from the line. Stay away from the line. Don't do it. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. We are working again on the low angle joiner plane. I'm going into detail in step by step of how this is doing. If this is the first time you've watched this video, you may want to go back and check out some of the other videos. I did an overview build of how to build this in 10 minutes. It was a pretty quick video. I skipped over a lot of things and now I'm going to be going back through step by step and really detailing what it takes to make a traditional plane that's not laminated. I do have plans for this on my website, so if you want to see those, I'll leave a link to that down below and it really goes through all the measurements that are needed to make this thing happen. So last time we cut out the escapement and we left it very rough. We just came in and chopped it out basically. This time we want to go through and really refine this, detail it down to the shape it needs to be and get everything ready for basically finish inside this hole. So it's going to be a very detailed process. We're going to take everything up to making the wedge and uh, turn this into something that looks kind of like a plane. So let's dive in and take a look at that. Now the next thing I want to do is here on the front of the mouth, this angle here that's only 10 degrees off of vertical, um, it's at the 80 degree line, I want to chop that out. And this one really doesn't matter that much as long as it ends up being right at the front of the mouth. Um, I don't want that to be, uh, I don't want that angle to tip back slightly and open up that mouth a little. I want to keep that mouth as closed as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to view this angle on the side and I'm going to try and line up the plane by eye with that angle. And I'm going to stay away from the line, again, staying away from as long as I can. And just tap it down a little bit and see how my angle is running out. And I need it actually right about there. I'm going to point it right at the front of that mouth and just kind of clean it up a little bit. And I'm going to come back in later and clean that up with files. I just want to make it visually at about the right angle. Take it off little bit by little bit until we get right down close to that mouth. There. That's pretty good for the moment being. Next thing I want to do is clear up the front of this angle. And I'm going to do basically the exact same thing. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to stay close to the line. I'm not going to go on the line, but I'm going to be close to it. And with my eye running down the chisel, I'm going to make sure I'm in line with that line. If anything, aiming up a little ways away from that line. And I'm just going to run down and clean that up a little bit. Still staying a long ways away from the line. And now you can see how we have a rough approximation from this angle here. And we have that nice line and this up here. Now you can see there's a lot of chisel marks and it's rough. That's fine. We're going to be coming in with a file later and cleaning that up. Uh, but right now I'm just getting things close to the line. I still have probably about a sixteenth of an inch or so up here that I need to remove. I'll probably just remove that with files and uh, we'll do that here. The next thing I want to do is get a bed line from the mouth straight back to this tape line here. And I want to kind of get a nice clean line running right down the middle, close to it, still up a little ways from the actual bed because we'll clean that up with files as well. But at least that gives me a visual reference from here down to there. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Now for this bed angle, I'm going to grab my quarter inch chisel and I'm still going to stay back here a ways away from the line. I'm going to be aiming high, so I'm eyeballing down the chisel and I'm going to be shooting out of the gap. And I just want to plane this down and I'm going to run one line from here all the way down at that appropriate angle. And so I'm eyeballing the chisel and I can tell where I need to go deeper and where I haven't gone deep enough, at what angle I need to be at, and eventually I'm just going to get a nice clean line. And this chisel is a little, little dull, so I'm going to go sharpen it up before I do anything more. So now I've got the center line from the tape all the way down to the mouth, really darn close. It's a little ways away from the tape line, it's a little ways away from the mouth, so I can be able to come in with a file or a float and clean that out. But it's a nice straight edge from one end to the other. And I'm just kind of coming in and slowly cleaning out, 
curl by curl all the way down to that depth. So that is now my visual line for the bed of this. The next thing I need to do before cleaning out the bed completely is these wedge walls need to actually go back in an angle. Uh, naturally you're going to think that these want to go straight down, but they actually need to tip in and go back at an angle and so that we have a line drawn from the tape here to the corner of the mouth. And that way we still have something that supports the wedge, but we have the full width of the mouth open for curls to come up into this space. So to do that, I'm going to come in here with the larger three-quarter inch chisel, and I'm just going to slowly pare down to that line. Just take off some meat and material, occasionally checking and eyeballing where the corner of that mouth is so that I can come back in and clean out. So just take it in inch by inch, little bit by little bit, until you get back down to the depths you're looking at. Try not to overkill it like I did there. Just take off a little bit at a time. A little curl here, a little curl there. So the next thing I want to do is cut out this area between the bed of the plane and where the top of the wedge will fit. And so to do that, I've got a, uh, got a ruler here. I'm going to slide through the mouth, and I want to draw a line from the front edge of the mouth back to where it intersects here with the front of the wedge tape. And so I'm going to hold this in place and then draw that line. Be very careful not to move it too much, not to move it at all. But now that I have that line drawn in there, now I can come in and remove this material back down to this line here. It's going to take a little bit of time, and again, I'm going to be staying away from the lines, but I'll be able to cut it out slowly but surely. Okay, so now it's time to cut out this channel for the wedge to go in, and this is going to probably be the most difficult part, uh, partially because you're cutting against the grain when you flip the bevel over and you run down that grain line here. Um, but if you take your time, and think about it, it's just taking out a whole bunch of little chips, a whole bunch of little curls, it will go fairly quickly. So I'm going to start by chopping straight down here, just staying away from the line, again, as long as possible. And I'm probably going to get up about a sixteenth of an inch or so away from there. Get up close to this edge. Oh shoot, I forgot to focus it. Still staying away from that tape line, just taking out little bits from the corner here and little bits from the corner there. You notice how these little chips coming off. Those chips are what you're looking for, just a whole bunch of little chips. Now I'm going to start in here, I'm going to take some bigger chops. I'm going to make sure that my plane, I'm going to make sure that my chisel is in line with the side of the plane, so I'm shooting straight in. I'm going to flip it around, do a little bit from the other angle, just kind of go back and forth and work at taking out these chips that just pop out here occasionally. Ooh, we're going to win a little past the line there, oops, oh well. Just little bit by little bit. Now as I get back in there farther, this quarter inch chisel is just a bit too big. And I wish I had a small sixteenth inch chisel, I don't. Uh, but I have this little carving gouge that works fairly well for this. So it gives me a rounded bottom of a cut, but that's okay. I can work with it and slowly work at bringing out some of those smaller chips farther back in there. So I'm just going to basically do the same step over and over again, all the way down at the bottom, taking out little bit by little bit. Switching out chisels, finding the one that works better. Keep an eye on that line, trying not to chip out past that line, which I just did there again. Oops, oh well. You want to be careful as you're shooting down against the grain, you get a tendency for the chisel to want to rise as it wants to go with the grain. So you have to stop occasionally, back it up, change your angle, slice off a finger, that type of thing. And I just want to stay away from the line as long as I can because eventually we're going to come in and clean it all out with a file. But I'm just going to keep working at this, get as far back as I can with this chisel, then switch over to the gouge and continue the process on down. What I'm basically doing is I'm shooting for the edge of the mouth because earlier we cleaned out that mouth and I know where that edge is. So as long as I stay aiming at that edge of the mouth, I know I'm going to be pretty good. So once I get down here close to the mouth, then we're actually going to check it with a straight edge, 
and that will tell us a lot more about where we need to remove material. So unfortunately my head got in the way of the rest of that shot. I didn't notice until after editing everything, so I'm um, sorry about that, but I'll kind of give you through this. Basically you're just going to continue making chips all the way down uh, until you get to the mouth. And so you should have a line from here to the side of the mouth, it should be perfectly straight. And so if you put a straight edge along there, you should have a really nice clean line all the way from the top to the bottom to the very edge of the mouth. And this lets you know you have a nice clean line for the wedge and the plane to slide along to get all the way down in there. Basically, you're going to be taking it step by step, chip by chip, little curl by little curl until you get all the way down in there. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the cleaner you make it, the easier it is for the iron to slide in there. Now, one of the things you may have noticed on the other side is that I made the egregious error when uh, boring out this. I ran my hole all the way into the side here and I made a fairly large mistake there. Oh well, um, not a major error, and it really doesn't cause that much of an issue other than it gets a little thinner there. But uh, yeah, when you're boring out holes, try and be a little more accurate than that. Oh well. Okay, so now I'm getting relatively close to the bottom here, and I have this center line that tells me that is the bed angle that I need. So I'm gonna come across here to the file, and I'm just gonna hold it flat to the surface, and rub it on here, and where it rubs, that's the high point. I want to take that down. And so I'm going to keep doing this with a chisel. I can see I'm high here, I'm high here, I'm not high in here, I'm not high back in here, I'm a little high over here. I'm going to fuzz those down with the chisel and install it until I get close. And once I get really close, then I'm going to smooth this whole thing out of the file. So, let me keep going. I'm just cleaning off a little bit here from where that file touched. Trying not to hit the areas where the file didn't touch and just hitting the areas where the file touched. So I'm just going to go back and forth, hitting it with the file, seeing where the high spots are. You can see I'm not putting much pressure on it, basically just putting my one finger on there and letting that slide and flatten out on the surface. And I'll go diagonal and I'll go diagonal, trying not to hit the sides, but getting close to them. And then I'm going to start moving up in chisel widths because the, the quarter inch one is going to be less flattening. And so I'm going to go up to a half inch and then a little while and a three quarter and then I'll probably clean it up with a, uh, with a one inch plane here in a little while. So I'll just keep working this down until I get a nice flat clean joint from tape line to the back of the mouth. So then I'm going to keep coming at this with finer and finer files until I get a really nice, smooth, clean surface all the way down and through the mouth. So after doing that for a little while and you get the bed fairly nice and flat so the iron slides all the way down in nicely, it's sitting flat on the bed, you have a nice fit between the bed and the iron. Now it's time to do the finishing touches on the mouth itself. So now that I did that on the bed, I'm going to basically go through all other surfaces and clean them up, smooth them down, file them out, get everything looking good. So I'll come in with a rough on the chisel, get it close to where I want it to be, and then I'll come in with a coarse file, get it closer, come in with a rough file, get it even closer, until everything is happy and smooth inside this uh, escapement. So now we've cleaned this out and it's fairly smooth. There's still a lot of little detail work to do, some nicks and things that need to get cleaned out later. But we want to make this functional before we make it perfect. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is actually fit the iron so it goes in there. I put a, a chip breaker on there. And one of the big reasons why I want to do a beveled down plane is so that I can have a chip breaker on the back. So I'm going to set those together and slide it in here. And then what's going to happen is this screw on the back is going to run into this body. We need to cut out a recess for that screw to slide down. So we're going to slide it in there and put it forward. Now what you could do is grab a marking knife, reach in there and mark off either side of where that screw is. But what I've done is actually gone through and taken the time to measure it out and taken all the measurements that are needed for how big of a recess do I need to actually make for that screw to slide in. So we need to lay out that measurement before we can go much further. So now that I've marked out all that, we can start removing the material. And it's basically going to be the exact same thing. We're going to start chopping in here, except for this is going to be like a new bed angle running all the way down. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing is going to interfere with it. 
Um, nothing is going to interact with it. We just need to leave enough space for that screw to slide through. So let's clamp this up and start removing that material. And just as before, we're going to start close to the lines, but not right on the lines. We're going to back it up a little bit from the line. Just start doing our, our stop cuts here. And then with these stop cuts, we need to be at an angle. And I can kind of eyeball it to the bed angle, just like that. And it's going to be more of the same running all the way down this. I, so I could just go like that and run down it, which I'm probably going to do. That's not that difficult. Just making sure I don't go too deep and I'm staying away from the lines. But then as I get close, I'm probably going to come in here and clean this out a bit. Stay away from those lines as long as you can. Then once we get close to the end, I'm going to go pretty close to right into that line. Just clean this out. And we should be able to test... We should be able to test the iron and see if it slides in now. So now we can set the iron in there and test it, make sure we get a good slide all the way down. It should be nice and tight because we're still going to be doing some final touch-up. But this should be clear for the screw underneath. You should be able to slide it down through that gap. And so now I have it. The iron is running into the front of the mouth here. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want the iron to be popping out. I want to be able to clean up the mouth here and make it a really nice tight fit. So now that we've fitted in there, we know it works and it's what it should be doing. We can take off all this tape uh, because at this point, these lines are pretty much worthless. We're just going to be doing some finesse work from this point on. So we can take this off and just get a little bit better view of what this is actually looking like. So just for experiment's sake, I figured I'd pull an iron out of one of my other old wooden planes to put it in here and see how well it fits. And <laughs> hot dog, um, the angle I drew for this one is dead on. So I could just use this one and I'm good to go. Um, but I want to make a different wedge for it and I want to make it out of something other than uh, the maple. So uh, yeah, we're going to play with this and make a new wedge. There you have it. So next time we'll be working on the wedge and possibly the button as well and getting those up and functional and basically having a good working plane. Um, only a couple more videos on this and we'll have everything done on uh, this whole project. So if you do want to uh, see the plans, I have a link to those in the description down below. If you do have any questions or thoughts or concerns, um, please let me know. Um, I also do want to say a little bit of a sorry for the audio on this. I recorded the entire process of making this plane before checking the audio and come to find out I had the the uh, gain set up on my transmitter like 20 plus dB and so it was just a mess to clean up so I'm sorry for that um, if it's a problem then I'll try and fix it the next time so <laughs> that's about it for today I do want to say thank you to the patrons on patreon and uh, those uh, who have been giving in the super chats and things like that you guys have really been what is making this channel happen so thank you for that I am hoping to make this better and to do some more detailed videos like this so if that's something you'd like maybe you'd like to uh, help out on patreon down there or just subscribe or share the video also you can check Check out more videos on my second channel and that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.